So I know I said at the start of this year, or at least back in the spring, I don't remember exactly when it was, that Monitor Roulette was over. That we're done reviewing monitors. Well, we're back. We're reviewing a couple more. We're doing a little bit of changing with the desk setup. I'll be showing that soon after CES. But we're reviewing a new monitor from BinQ. This is the BinQ EX2780Q. I feel like they just added the Q at the end to match BinQ, but that could just be me. This is a 27 inch 1440p 144 hertz monitor. It is IPS, it has FreeSync, and it has HDR. Although, eh, but it's got some cool features with HDR that we're going to talk about because it's, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. This review is brought to you by myself on Floatplane. Early access to videos other than this holiday season. Behind the scenes content, support free tech education. Go to it. Okay, bye. Full disclosure, as always, this monitor was sent for review by BenQ. However, they're not paying for this review, seeing it's before it's posted, have any control over what's being said or anything like that, and they've never purchased advertising on my channel before. But as always, I like to provide these disclosures to you. Back to the review. This is the monitor that kind of does it all. It's great for movies, for TV shows, and for games. It's great for productivity and play, which is not super common these days. And that's part of the reason I got kind of bored of reviewing gaming monitors and didn't really want to take in anymore because I took in like three they were all basically the same thing they had different degrees of curves and they had free sync g-sync compatible and they had high refresh rate and there wasn't anything exciting I didn't feel like there was any innovation they were just had different stands or something like that well this one is different it is bright it is vivid it is meant to be a moving wa a movie watching experience as much as it's meant to be a gaming experience it has a speaker bar at the bottom it has a subwoofer on the back that's 2.1 pretty good audio for a monitor i was quite impressed and it has some movie watching oriented features now the product page the actual images for it says 24p mode or something like that it doesn't actually support at least natively in windows you could probably force it via the nvidia control panel it doesn't have a native reported support for 24 hertz unfortunately but the advantage here is that whether you run it at 120 hertz or 144 hertz both of those are even multiples of 24 hertz fps why is this important because if you're watching movies or tv shows that are created at 24 fps which the vast majority of them are you can experience a weird you know judder or frame pacing issue on 60 hertz displays or 165 hertz displays where you know big motion panning ends up looking way more stuttery than it otherwise normally would if you were watching it on your tv because it's having to adapt the 24 hertz to your 60 hertz refresh rate that's not an even interval that is not an even division and so you're ending up with you know mismatched frame counts that can make the experience a little less enjoyable the same thing if you're trying to run you know a 60 hertz game on a 24 hertz display people have done that and this is why you know youtube channel i always make fun of youtube channels that make 24 fps videos but then have gameplay segments in it because the gameplay being dropped down to 24 fps ends up looking pretty bad and that's not just the lower frame rate it is the frame pacing of what was originally recorded so by switching to a high refresh by having a high refresh rate that supports like 120 hertz does both 60 hertz multiples and 24 hertz multiples then you have a smooth judder free experience for the most part whether you're gaming or watching movies which is really really nice and of course 30 goes into 60 so if you're watching 30 fps tv still works fine there this monitor also has the connectivity that is super useful for a good you know media enjoyment experience beyond just gaming that's two hdmi 2.0 ports so you could hook that up to a playstation 4 an xbox one x or your pc buy a capture card if needed it has display port or pc and it has usb-c and you can actually Plug it in via USB-C to get display out, be it you have a computer with, you know, Thunderbolt graphics like a MacBook Pro, or you have an RTX graphics card from NVIDIA with the USB-C virtual link. You can power, well not power, but you can drive the whole display from that USB-C cable and get a little USB expansion hub as well. That's pretty cool. Now I did want to note since I did say consoles, the Xbox One X is the only one that can currently output native 1440p which is pretty cool and it can do 120 hertz support if you're at 1080p so you you get a little bit of options there uh, so the xbox one x is the best console to pair with this playstation 4 pro will have to drop down to 1080p it does thankfully come with visa mount by default on the back and one of the previous binq monitors i reviewed had to come with a separate 
uh, Visa mounting kit. Again, I did mention it's an IPS panel. It is 10 bit and it does support HDR, but it's only 350 or 400 nits. I'm not exactly sure because I've gotten two different numbers for the same monitor, but it's, you know, it's not the full HDR 100, you know, 100 nits brightness, like real HDR experience, like my Dell production monitors here but it's still pretty decent. I click, kicked it on and played back some HDR Blu-ray rips and it looks pretty good. It is, especially for a casual gaming experience, like it's going to provide a decent HDR experience that honestly, my production monitors, the HDR gets pretty blinding. So that's pretty cool to see. And if you are using it with PC, the PC HDR experience has actually improved quite a bit. Whenever you enable HDR within Windows, you actually now have a slider to adjust how bright and you know how vivid SDR contents are so you can actually control how your Windows UI looks in HDR which has been a major problem up until recent updates this is a very recent update that really makes the Windows desktop usable in HDR like you can tell that it's slightly off from how it normally looks in SDR but otherwise it's totally usable and if you were just coming to it you know having woken up one morning you'd never know the difference which is really cool now it does have a speaker bar as I mentioned the sound is really really good for a monitor you're still gonna you're going to get better sound from a real sound bar or from a nice, you know, speaker setup or headphones or whatever. But for a, if you just want something that's kind of an all in one, you know, you turn it on and play sound from it experience. Most realism and it looks excellent. But more than anything else, it's the support for high dynamic range that left us most impressed. The sound from it is pretty solid and you're probably going to be satisfied. It also comes with this remote, which I didn't think would be, I, I thought it'd be pretty silly. But I've gotten so annoyed recently with the behind the monitor controls for monitors and fidgeting with them. And even on this one, the monitor actually comes in very, or the remote actually comes in very handy. And I am starting to wish all monitors had remotes because it's so much easier to control settings with this thing. Because it controls all the OSD settings as well as quick toggles for certain things. Including something you might see them broad, or, you know, advertising on this, which is HDRI. Now this is their own internal image processing on the monitor for HDR signals to try to retain some of the shadow and highlight detail, which you might think would be the point of HDR. Yes, except for when you only have 400 nits of peak brightness, you don't have a high enough contrast ratio for some of the extremes that you may encounter during an HDR viewing or gaming experience. And so the it has three modes. It has display HDR, which is the standard mode. It has cinema HDR and it has gaming HDR. Gaming HDR kind of makes things a little bit more flat during the, you know, super blown out highlights and shadows to keep some of that detail, which is important if you want to see what's going on. If you're playing like a multiplayer game and you want all the little detail. Cinema HDR actually, at least it may be technically less accurate because you might think that display HDR is the most accurate since it's a real HDR. But cinema HDRI, the game and cinema modes are HDRI because that's their image processing on top of HDR. The Cinema HDRI retains a lot more saturation in the highlights. Like the Display HDR and the Game HDR kind of lose saturation in the highlights and shadows and, you know, the colors get a little weird. With Cinema HDR, the colors stay vivid and they pop a lot more. And I usually don't go for these gimmicks. Usually I'm just like, leave it on whatever is the normal setting and don't touch it. But I'm finding it pretty hard to convince me not to leave it on Cinema HDR, which is kind of impressive. Now, I did want to say, unfortunately, my monitor shipped with a dead pixel. Obviously, this can happen with any monitor from any company. And I this is the first time I've ever personally gotten a monitor with a dead or stuck pixel. Uh, I have an IRL buddy who got one that got that way. And then um, I have a buddy up, you know, in a state way up north that pretty much every monitor he gets has a dead or stuck pixel. Personally, once I start looking at them and notice it, it drives me up a wall. But that doesn't at all guarantee that you will get one whatsoever. It is pretty much luck of the draw with shipping and stuff with monitors. They do also have a lot of settings for this monitor regarding auto brightness levels and low, low blue light settings and stuff. These are really healthy for your eye fatigue for actually using it long term and that you can even enable reminders where it's like, hey, you've been staring at this monitor for too long. Go look at something else for a little bit and then you clear out the reminder and it automatically comes back and things like that. That's again, really healthy options for your eye fatigue, but it can mess with the colors and the accuracy. And I'm someone who doesn't like that. So I usually turn all of that off, but they do have these settings available if that's something that's important to you. And I have found myself disappointed that my main monitors don't have the blue light reduction filter as I have found, you know, historically that to be really helpful for me. So overall though, the image quality is pretty solid. It's great as a gaming experience. Again, you get free sync, you get up to 144 Hertz. I prefer sticking at 120. You 
get a pretty complete package here with this monitor and it's gonna be sticking around in my setup for a little while i did just want to share with you here we're going to be coming back into monitor roulette i do have another my very first ultra wide monitor that we're going to be reviewing soon so stay tuned for that i'm impulse fox hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe for more tech education and i'll see you in the next one